A couple more little pieces have arrived for the e-bike project. Firstly, I've got some connectors. I wanted to get something that relatively decent. Um, these, I think, are mainly used for hobby RC kind of stuff. Um, they are XC, XT90, not X, not a Volvo XC90. Um, they should hopefully handle the power for the e-bike. I'm sure they probably waited for that much. Um, so I've got some of those, and I'll be putting, I think, this female end on things like the charger and uh, the hub motor controller and this end will go on the bike because uh, for the battery I should say because I don't really want to accidentally brush past these terminals with something metal and sort of uh, short them so I'll be putting those on in due course and my charger also has arrived now, this was a super cheapy charger remember this is a cheap e-bike build um, it's 54.6 volts at 2 amps and yes only 2 amps I know a lot of these go up to a lot more they're bigger better chargers um, they're more expensive and this was cheap and to be honest I'm happy charging the battery packs at really low amps um, I mean the, the each pack is going to be 11.3 amp hours um, so this is going to be you know very low charge rate for that which is fine I don't mind if that sits on all day all night whatever that's not a problem um, the batteries are used, the cells are used of course I'd rather not stress them by charging them at anything like 1C for example um, I'd rather um, charge them well under that which this thing will be. So this came with a proprietary, um, it looks like an aerial connector, um, coaxial connector on there, don't know why that is. Um, anyway, I'll be chopping that off and uh, soldering on these connectors here, which is, um, you know, far in excess, two amps, this can handle an awful lot more than that, but it's just simply what the connectors will be using for the for the e-bike anyway. I did notice something strange while I was just testing this. If I plug it in, Turn it on, green light, get the multimeter. Now maybe you guys can tell me if this is uh, a good thing or a bad thing, if this matters or not. Voltage of course should be 54.6, it is 54, effectively 0 0.7, 0 0.68, so 54.7 realistically. Now does that tenth of a volt make a difference? Is that going to be a problem for my pack? Is that going to be overcharging it ever so slightly? I will be charging it through the um, uh, the BMS, obviously. So, will that take out any problems with it? Will the BMS take charge and stop it from overcharging? Which is good. I hope it does. That's, that's the idea behind them, I'm sure. Uh, in which case, this extra point one of a volt, in theory, shouldn't matter, right? I don't know. Help me out. Mmm. Overkill. Look at that. Oh well. Okay, not a bad looking connection that. Hopefully it'll uh, stay together okay. So time to uh, check the connectivity of it. Great. Basically the same voltage, yeah, same voltage as last time. Good, that works. I've made a start wiring up the uh, charger wires for the um, for the battery, this first battery. So I've connected at the positive end here on the 
positive uh, end of the entire battery pack. I've just stripped two parts of the wire here for the uh, monstrous two amps that my charger puts out, but still I'd rather it had a very good contact. I just traced it along the top here with some more hot snot, the same as the balance wires. And at this end, the BMS, it's connected up under the uh, C negative terminal there. Um, and I've just soldered, if you can see, under there. And this wire is now bent around. I'll be using some, some hot snot or something to hold that in place along the side there. Group them together and used some heat shrink here to hold it together. And I've just soldered together this XT90 connector at the end. So uh, I'm assuming that at the moment I won't see the full voltage through these just yet because of course I haven't yet soldered the BMS negative, the main negative, to the negative terminal of the battery which is uh, this one here. Uh, I need to do that both obviously for the power side of things um, to pull the power from it but also I think even to complete the circuit for charging otherwise the two amps will be running all the way through these balance leads through here so I don't think it wants to work that way. But that's how I've soldered on the charge lead. I wanted to put a separate um, power lead for the charge onto here. I don't think I have to. Um, I can probably use the the one main large power lead which will go to the motor controller. I could probably use that to charge it and just the negative for the charging circuit through here uh, and into the bottom of the BMS there. But uh, I thought it would be a little neater this way. I'd rather have one entire separate wire just for charging, just alone. It also is a smaller grade of wire of course. It doesn't carry anywhere near the same amps that the main motor controller would be taking. Um, so I've got, I've got that all sort of put into position now. And I'll probably be putting the main uh, power lead for the motor controller at the bottom of this because this top end here has had a few things soldered onto it now it's getting a bit busy so down there probably we'll go over the main one and then the other main uh, end will be soldered down here as well possibly near the bottom on this negative end and then soldered up onto the BMS so the battery negative goes there B negative and uh, P negative there is the um, the controller, the motor controller, power negative and of course power positive doesn't run through this at all this is only for negative power positive simply comes from the positive terminal of your battery straight to the motor controller a couple of tests now I've just wired in the uh, main negative between the BMS and the battery itself um, having a second thought about it after I uh, filmed what I did a moment ago uh, maybe I don't need this negative from the BMS to the pack in order to charge it. Maybe the, this BMS on its own can handle the amount of current, certainly I suppose from my pathetic charger at 2 amps, all through these balance leads. I'm not sure, maybe it does just need this one and the negative to charge. Uh, maybe you guys can tell me that. Either way, I've connected this in just to be certain if the BMS needs it. Um, obviously I haven't yet wired in the main power positive, it definitely won't need that. I know that to charge, that's not going to be a problem, it won't need that. I'll do that later. I haven't got the wiring yet, but I'll do that later. So. In theory this is now okay to charge, so the moment of truth will be coming up soon and I'll be uh, taking it outside onto uh, my sort of uh, gravel and driveway garden area um, where if it, if it catches fire then uh, at least it won't burn anything down. So just to check some of the connectivity at the moment, we should have the, I think I mentioned it earlier, what was it now? Yeah, 47.1617. Um, volts there, so again discharge, that's fine, that's okay. Slight interlude. This is a big spider. Now in the UK, oh, it's just moved a little bit. Yeah, there we go. In the UK, we've got some of the most venomous spiders in the world. This spider is about 30 centimeters wide. Don't worry about sort of perspective here with my camera shot. Don't worry about that. It's about 30 centimeters wide. It's venomous enough to kill you within about four or five seconds. And it's made a home here in my, um, in my garage next to my desk here where I'm soldering. So just watch out for spiders whenever you're in the UK. Extremely venomous, far worse than anything you ever see in Australia. Are you ready for this? This could be a big fire. So it's on concrete there, my driveway. And it's relatively close to my car. Hopefully it won't catch that alight. And there's also a gravel area of the garden just there so I can throw it out onto that if I need to. I'll just pick it up as it's exploding, that'll be fine. So, charge is in. This might be quite difficult for me to do whilst holding the camera. Let's have a go. 
it's not plugged in at the moment, I mean the charge is not turned on. Right, so we're connected. And <laughs> here goes nothing. Right, the charger light has come on and stayed red, which I suppose is a good sign. That means it's taking charge. And there's no immediate smoke. No smoke. Okay. I wonder if there's any heat. No heat. No heat. Good. I'm going to get my multimeter now and check everything. So my pack before was at uh, 47 point, I think it was 2 volts. So I'm just seeing now what it's at. Touch the negative terminal. Yeah, so it's now at 48.2. I've just been doing this a moment ago as well and it's climbing extremely slowly, which is fine. Because it's a, uh, a relatively large pack considering the number of amps that are going into it charging. 2 amps going in charging, it's a 11.3 uh, amp pack. So, there you go, you can see it climbing slowly, 48.21. I mean, anyway, it was a 47.2 and within seconds it's now at 48.2 anyway. I just connected up a moment ago, so you can see it climbing. So it is charging. I will continue to monitor it and make sure it doesn't get hot or catch a light. But other than that, it looks like this pack is done, so I can't wait to uh, get the rest of the wires onto this and uh, use it on the bike. Second pack done now. That's the soldering at the end for the positive end, the positive terminal. More hot snot. Coming up there, the negative soldered onto the BMS just there. Come to focus, and also uh, there's a negative from the BMS to the pack there as well. Coming along here, and heat shrink up to my Volvo XC90 connector. So, time to see if I've got voltage there. Brilliant, 47.08. Perfect, all wired up well. So this will take ages before I can, this will be ages before I can charge it because the other one's probably gonna take minimum 12 hours to fully charge. So that's fine, uh, at least it's now wired up, ready to go.